My name is Beverly Rowe Ladyman. Um, my brother, who everybody called, who knows him as Sonny, Sonny Rowe, and my brother-in-law, they lived with myself and my husband for many years and in that time they worked on the APB and they used to go out for a couple of weeks at a time um, dealing with the poisons to supposedly kill weeds. Um, on their return they used to come home with their little swags with their wet smelly clothes that they've used all covered and soaked in the, the poison um, and of course I used to wash their clothes and in that same washing machine my husband and my clothes were being washed as well. Um, I believe that some of the health problems that I have today is from that poison being directly in contact with it. Um, but first off, I'll let, let you know about my brother, Sonny. He was a healthy young man. He, um, he used to play football, he used to go everywhere with his cousins and, you know, do fishing, do all the things young boys used to do. And to see him when he finally couldn't do anything, you know, when he was paralysed and he couldn't move, he couldn't do anything for himself anymore. You know, you, 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 it just makes you think. Why is he suffering like this? No protection, you know, never had their, any, any PPE. Did all the work in their clothes, what they walk, walk, walked in, you know. Um, and then bringing her all home for me to wash. Soaking, mind you, that was soaking wet. And you can smell it, you know, the poison. And, um, you know, they had no masks, they had no gloves, they didn't have anything. And neither did I when I washed all their stuff. I mean, I wasn't to know at that time, you know, that I'd be suffering from it as well, washing it in my, my washing machine and my husband's clothes as well. Then, a few years later on down the track, he started getting sick, started getting very bad headaches. And um, oh, I can't talk. We were very close, myself and my brother. Um, as I said, he lived with me for many years. He started having bad headaches and um, I used to give him Panadol, but Panadol wasn't enough. So I took him to see the doctor. And the doctor said that, um, that he's suffering with sinus. But I knew it was much more than sinus because I suffer with sinus and I know what it's like. And um, it got to the point where they wasn't doing anything for him in Carnarvon, so I sent him down here to Perth to stay with my sister down here. And he was still having bad headaches and re it was really getting worse at this stage, so she took him to the uh, hospital, see the doctor, found out that he had tumour on the brain. So when they found that out, my sister called me and um, I came down to Perth. I went back to the hospital with him and the doctors wanted to operate on him and I said, well, what's the point in operating if you said it's inoperable and if it's malignant? And they said, well, they just want to investigate just in case they miss something and they may be able to um, operate or whatever, I don't know. So he agreed to it. And um, 
when the date was set for it, I went back home to Carnarvon and I said, when the date comes up for you to have the operation, call me. But when he had the operation, so he went in and didn't call me, forgot all about me. When he had the operation, it didn't do him any good, apparently. It, it made him paralysed one side of his body. And I, naturally I got angry and I asked, went and seen the nurse. She said, I'll speak to the um, doctor in charge. So I spoke to the doctor. I demanded to talk to him. So they kept him tied up in his chair because if he leaned forward with his paralysis, he would have fallen out. So I guess that was understandable. But I believe that um, that brain tumour was caused from the Agent Orange, the poison, the weed killer. As soon after that, then my brother-in-law started getting headaches, bad headaches, and feeling sick all the time. And he was epileptic, but it was controlled. But after he started getting sick, he got, um, his ep epilepsy got worse. And um, he was taking fits in front of me, you know. So um, I had to take him to the hospital. So not just my brother, but both of them, I had to care for. But um, in the end, my brother-in-law went back home down here to Perth. And my brother stayed with me. I nursed him right up until I had to put him in hospital where he needed very strong painkillers. And that's where he died in hospital. All them boys that worked on APB, they were all healthy people. Played football, you know, basketball. They were sporty people. And then all of a sudden, yeah, and fishing, you know, hunting, all, all that type of thing, they couldn't do it anymore. They were laying you know, like vegetables in their beds. Couldn't do anything. And the hurt and the stress was put upon us, the family, that, you know, was looking after them, caring for them. And um, it, it still hurts me because I still don't know, got no answers and I want answers still to this day, why my brother died, why he suffered, you know, he really suffered. And this is my husband here and they both are gone now. And there is something else that I wanted to add to it as well. Um, I've had five miscarriages. I could never keep, um, I could get pregnant, but I'd lose them each time. And I only managed to keep one and give birth to one, only with the assistance of the, the doctors for me being able to keep her in, you know. And I had to be sent down here to Perth for months at a time. And um, yeah, that, that was another great impact on me. And I kept losing all my babies. And, um, yeah. I'd like people to, I'd like someone to be accountable for it, to admit they were wrong and to come forward and speak with us and compensate us for pain and suffering. I mean, he can't get anything. He's, yeah, he's dead. My husband's dead. My brother-in-law's dead. You know? But I'm still here carrying that weight of losing three people I loved. 